What's going on guys, it's Andrew here again. Um, I'm gonna do a video today on the X3. I'm gonna do a build series, I guess make it a two-part video so it's not one long 20 minute video. Um, I'm gonna try to go into as much detail on the machine as I can, as well as uh, doing a review on all the parts I've installed and how they've held up so far and uh, just any tips and tricks I've, I've got for doing modifications that I've done so far as well as any regrets that I've had and maybe any part failures I've had so far. Um, if y'all got any questions, feel free to drop them below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. I know on rides, people always ask me stuff and I try to be as helpful as I can on them. Um, but I guess we'll start here. It's a uh, 2020 Can Am Maverick X3 Turbo Double R and it's the XMR. Um, bought the machine new in March, planned on keeping it as a, uh, I guess a trail machine riding the mountains and some rocks, but I just, I don't have time with work to get up there and make two and three day long trips in the mountains. So I decided I will do it for the type of riding I got down here. I essentially built the same machine as my last turbo razor was. Tried to keep it as trail friendly and reliable as I could, as well as being able to go down a trail and hit holes without having to worry about getting stuck and just pulling a winch every, every time you get on a hole. But anyways, uh, I guess we'll start up front. Um, the tires and wheels are a uh, 12 four by 24. They're a D stone Duramax D321. Um, it's a pretty uncommon tire. I've ran them on my last buggy in an 11 two. I can't say enough about these tires. They pull great. Um, they do ride worse than say a BKT or similar tire, but the lug spacing on them and the way they pull is great. Um, <clears throat> I got them on 24 inch MSA Brutes. Wasn't a huge fan of the wheels at first, but uh, they're starting to grow on me. Especially, I, I plan on doing some color changing down the road. Um, everybody always asks me what arms I'm running. I was kind of skeptical of them at first, but they're actually the boxed arms from Super ATV. And so far, I've had zero issues, no complaints. I was pretty skeptical on the adjustment blocks they have up front, but uh, I got them tightened down pretty good when I put it together, and I haven't had an issue since. Um, for ball joints, I'm running Keller ball joints. It's just their standard duty. I'm not running a mega or a mud pin, just a standard Keller ball joint, upper and lower. So far, I haven't had any issues. I try to keep them lubed and adjusted every couple rides, just keep any premature wear to uh, as least amount as possible. On um, my tie rods are actually, I guess you call them a billet rod. <clears throat> Those come from LMUTV. They use a, supposed to be an FK Heim on the end and the outer. Uh, and it actually bolts to the, the factory rack and pinion with the clevis, which I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big fan of. I don't like the ball and socket style when you go big builds with portals and all. It's just a lot of stress and leverage. Oh, um, however, I'm not too pleased with the Heim joints. As you can hear and see, they are very loose for how many miles are on them. The passenger side one, it actually has a little bit of play. Let's see if I can get it to show up on video. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but these joints only have about 300 miles on them. And uh, I'm pretty particular on my maintenance. I keep them cleaned and I try to keep them as uh, lubed up as I can. And that one's got play in it. It's not noticeable in the steering yet, but uh, it's definitely something I'm gonna replace here soon. I just, I don't like any, uh, any play in my, my suspension components especially with tires this big. So I plan on changing those, but besides that, they've been pretty good uh, tie rods. <clears throat> I'm running factory springs still. Everybody's always asking me what springs I'm running. The 2020 72 inch model X3s actually come with a different spring than all the other models. For whatever reason, K&M decided to put a better spring rate finally. So everybody always had to do the, the big high lifter springs on the other models. The 2020s actually come with a better spring rate. So I got factory springs front and rear. They're adjusted down about an inch more than factory. I wanted to keep the ride as close to factory and travel as close to factory as I could, but also wanted to get a little more ground clearance. Oh, um, I keep my shocks on the softest setting just for mud riding. But if I plan on getting, getting aggressive on the trails, I'll turn it up a little bit just to keep the nose dive down a little. <clears throat> uh, portals, I'm running the cast eight inch. 45% gear reduction portals from Super ATV. So far, they've been good. Um, 
I had one portal seal leak on the passenger rear. I think it was due to running fast on some trails. But uh, besides that, they've been good. I've been kind of mindful of them when I get in the bind, try to keep them breaking out of their gears. Um, everybody's asking me about my roof. It's a factory cage, but the roof and the top cage half come from UTV Inc. They say it only fits the 2020s. I can't confirm if it'll fit the 17s or 19s, but they claim it only fits 2020s and it replaces the whole top half of the cage and it takes the, the hump out of the middle of the cage that the X3s come with. I, I did that one for clearance on the garage door. It's very tight, if you can't tell. Um, it was very tight when I did portal, so I, I did that on there. They claim it lowers at three to four inches, as well as it brings the roof down in the front and acts as a sun visor, and it turns it into a radius style roof. I'll step back and see if y'all can see that, but it turns it into like a radius style cage, but it keeps the stock uh, cage rails on the side. At the time I was, I was gonna do a uh, aftermarket cage, but I believe I'm just gonna stick with the factory cage for now. I'm pretty happy with this set up. Uh, I don't have any complaints. I'm running uh, just a cheap tinted half polycarbonate windshield. I don't even remember where I got it from. Maybe UTV Zilla. I couldn't find it on the website the other day. It's got a few light scratches as you can see here. Uh, mainly just for me having it covered in mud and washing it without uh, knocking the mud off or limbs and all that, but it's held up pretty well. It was, it was less than a hundred dollars. So I can't, I can't complain too much. <clears throat> I'm currently still running the factory doors that come on the XMR. I do plan on changing those out to like a rebel style custom door or something of the similar, um, a door that comes up to this top body line and follows back here. I, I like the high door style, but for now I'm just going, I'm going to run the factory doors until I make my mind up on which door brand I want to go with. Um, I guess I'll start on the audio. Uh, people normally ask me what all's done to it because on the outside you don't see much but the two tower speakers. <clears throat> I'm running, uh, I guess I'll start with the subs. I'm running two kicker comp RT tens. They're a one ohm sub, I'm sorry. They're a dual, dual two ohm sub. And I got them wired at, I got them wired in a series parallel so they're down at one ohm at the amplifier. Um, up top, I got the Rockford Fosgate uh, dash panels that come in their stage one, or I believe it's their stage two through five kit. I bought their dash panels and I put the kicker KM, I believe they're the KM65 Marine uh, speakers. They come with LEDs in them. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post a picture after this. I'll post a picture showing how they are when they're all lit up at night. Um, great speakers for the money. They're less than $150 a pair. They have RGB lighting, very clear. Not a whole lot of mid bass dude, it been a six and a half, but they're very clear. Um, and for the money, it's just very hard to beat. Down here, I'm running the same six and a half inch kickers, but I'm running the UTV stereo kick panel pods. Main reason I went with those was I wanted to keep as much leg room as possible. As you can see, it doesn't, it doesn't take up much leg room at all. My foot, I wear a size 13 shoe and I can still fit my foot on the uh, left side of the driver floorboard, no problem. I did that mainly just to keep the foot room. Um, I don't have any uh, complaints with those. They're fairly cheap, 50, 60 bucks. Um, pretty simple to install. I wish the, the hardware was a little better though. The self-tapping screws they send you that they want you to self-tap into the frame are not worth throwing away. Uh, I use my own hardware. Um, for the amplifiers, they're kind of hidden. I mounted them underneath the dash. One of them is here and one of them is back here below this dash panel. Uh, one is a DS18 600.1 monoblock amp wired at one ohm. That powers my subwoofers here. Those are also, I meant to say, they're in the UTV stereo low profile uh, sub boxes. As you can see, I got a pretty good bit of room between the sub and the seat if I ever wanted to lower my seat down to the lower hole. Uh, I just prefer it to be in the upright position. I like that seating style. The other amp is a, uh, I can't remember the exact model number, it's a DS18 four channel lamp. It does a hundred RMS per six and a half speaker. It's plenty of power for these six and a halves. They scream uh, very clear. Um, I got the amps tuned pretty uh, safe. I'd like to be able to play my stereo loud for several hours without them getting hot. Um, these side panels here, everybody's always asking me. These side panels, 
as well as the Rockford PMX mount. All of that came from UTV Stereo as well. Uh, those are very good products for the money. They're cheap, they work good, and the fit and finish on them as well. It looks like a factory fit on the head unit. Uh, try to get a, a side shot, see if you can see it. Uh, I, I would highly recommend those to anybody that wants to run something like I do. I run an iPad as my head unit. I say my head unit, as my, as my um, music player. Um, I run an iPad in this mount. That is not the Can-Am mount, it's Kimimoto. Um, I could not see spending the $140, $150 that Can-Am wants when you can get the exact same product from Kimimoto, from Amazon, eBay, a couple other suppliers have it. Uh, it also doubles as a storage bin. You can open, open it up, I keep some koozies in there. It gives you access to a 12 volt plug. You can have a phone charger. The way I do it, I normally run a, a phone charger out of the cubby, plugged into my iPad when it's up there. This keeps it charged if you wanna run a GPS trail map or do like I do and I just use that as a uh, pretty much a big iPod. Um, I got a just a just a clip on phone mount that mounts where the rear view mirror used to go as you can see it would be completely useless now. Um, it's just a magnetic clip on phone mount. Uh, I like it. It keeps my phone up and out the mud and water for the most part it doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, I'll step around on the passenger side and I'll show you the uh, what sound micro four amp I'm running for the tower speakers. I've had several of these amps and I've had great luck with all of them. I know some people have had some hit and miss uh, issues on them. I believe it's mainly due to water intrusion, people mounting them somewhere where they get submerged or they just don't take care of them. I mounted mine behind the, dry, uh, behind the passenger seat uh, just because I'm not a fan of mounting amplifiers overhead. I like, uh, I like my roof to be clean and simple. So I mounted it here as I'm not a big water rider. I like to trail ride and hit holes like anybody else does, but I try to stay out of deep, deep water. Normally if it gets about, I don't know, seat level, I, I try to back up or turn around. I'm just not, I'm not a huge fan of going real deep in water on this thing, uh, but it's been a great amplifier. Uh, I got it powering my kicker KMTC nine inch tower speakers. Um, these, in my opinion, are the best tower speakers on the market it, when it comes to overall sound, loudness, sound quality, depth, mid bass. These are the nines. I had the Kicker 11s, same speaker in an 11. They actually use the same horn. The 11 just has a larger driver. Um, I can't say enough about these speakers. They are, in my opinion, the best. They are pricey, but the mount on them is extremely sturdy. Uh, when you check the speaker, it shakes the bike. Um, they're very simple to install and adjust. They come with RGB lighting in it and all that. I got it hooked up. Uh, so they come on when you turn the head unit on. Um, those are mounted on off-road sound systems, sound bar, I'm sorry. Off-road sound systems tower bar. He, he powdered it for me, matched it uh, almost perfect. It is a great powder coat match. Josh Gorman, y'all need to look him up, off-road sound systems. Uh, he's definitely the go-to when it comes to wake tower bars on these machines. If anybody with an XMR runs the issue like me, I wanted to run towers facing backwards as well as a 45 quart uh, full size cooler. And as you can see, space, space is very limited. So this is actually their bar they make for the XMR. They normally mount, <clears throat> I believe they normally mount it right here. I slid it back in this position just so I could keep the top. Let me see if I can get, a, get it in uh, frame. I wanted to keep the top of the cage and the top of the tower bar essentially at the same height. Cause that, like I said, I'm very limited on garage door height. Um, but so far I'm very pleased with it. That's another reason why I plan on keeping this factory cage for a while is I like my audio set up. Um, last part of this video, I guess, I'll include people always ask me about my cooler. This is a factory uh, dyed cooler, I guess you can say. It comes from Yeti, it's Chartreuse, uh, 45 quart. I believe it's new for 2020 and it is almost an exact match to the Can-Am Manta Green. I believe you can pick it up for 300 bucks off Amazon. Um, I'm gonna end this video on that. I'll do another two part video on this uh, series, I guess. And I'll go over some more performance modifications. Uh, I'll do the rear suspension and I'll go through and talk about any carnage I've had and any other issues I've had with the buggy. So y'all stay tuned. I'll be posting part two to this here shortly. If y'all got any questions or comments, y'all just drop them below, subscribe, like. Um, I'm gonna try to, try to keep this channel updated as best I can. 
I plan on doing a video on my Gladiator there. Uh, I'm going to get some GoPro videos when we go ride here in a couple weeks. So y'all stay tuned.